guys and welcome to my channel so as you guys probably have noticed like I like to shop and I like to um, probably talk so I'm gonna start working on trying to shorten my videos so we're gonna start uh, we're trying to shorten this one today but anyway I wanted to show you guys my way of making baked macaroni and cheese which is just a favorite you know all across America and so anyway, um, you start out by, depending on how much you're making, like if you're making for 50 people, then you want to use like a gigantic pot or something, I guess like a stock pot about that tall, a mama pot. But because I'm just doing a small amount for my family, well, there are about eight people and I usually like to make enough for leftovers. Then I'm going to take just an average size regular pot and in this pot, you know, I have a little bit of salt, which is about a, um, we'll say it's probably about a teaspoon of salt that's in this boiling pot of water. And to it, I'm gonna show you guys that I'm gonna add some cooking oil and it could be any kind of oil, even olive oil or whatever. But anyway, you add that to the pot about, I added about two tablespoons. Um, you could do a little bit less, like maybe, let's say one tablespoon or even a teaspoon. The reason why you add the oil and the salt is because your noodles absorb the salt and the oil prevents your noodles from uh, sticking together. So then we take a 16 ounce box. Now this is gonna serve, like I said, after it cooks, it's gonna swell up and it will serve about eight to 10 people. And so we're gonna take a 16 ounce box or bag of, I like large elbow macaroni. I hate to make the little macaroni noodles because all the cheese doesn't just melt right into them. So anyway, I just pour that right in there. And then I'll let it begin to boil again. And then this pot that's next to it, my little copper chef pot. I love this pot, y'all get one. But anyway, I don't know, it's just versatile. So in the pot that's next to it or a saucepan, but whatever you do, make sure that you use something that is non-stick. And with that being said, so in this next uh, dish right here, which could be a saucepan, if you don't have a saucepan, shoot, get a skillet. You know what I mean? Just make sure that it kind of comes up high. And what you do is just take like a stick of butter, like so, and you just kind of bust it open. And cut it right in half. If I was making a huge thing of macaroni and cheese, I'd probably use the whole stick or something, you know, but I don't really go over a whole stick, um, no matter how much I, macaroni and cheese I'm making. And the only reason why is because um, it can make it can make your um, cheese instead of it being stringy to me the butter can make it kind of custardy you know like clumpy or something I, I don't know it's just weird but um, yes you can substitute you know if your funds is limited or something like that you can substitute your butter with margarine I just preferred not to and um, you know just for certain dishes I'll use margarine for certain dishes I'll make uh, use um use the other one and so after your noodles began to boil again you'll notice that they are kind of like sticking to the bottom even though this is a non-stick pot but anyway give them a nice little stir and every now and then stir them now something that's real important is when you're making macaroni and cheese and you want to bake it not just make it and you know uh it's like just made from the oven top without putting it in the oven and making it. Don't cook your noodles all the way because they will still cook once you put them in the oven, which I'm gonna show you guys what I mean, you know, when we get to that point. So right now we're gonna begin to melt this um, butter 
over about low heat. And bear with me because I'm going to grab a can of milk. So I'm kind of melting slow in there. So I'm giving my macaroni noodles just another little stir because, I mean, they're still gonna stick together, but not a big clump, you know what I mean? But you still have to watch these bad boys. And just make sure that you're giving them a stir, you know, like here and there, to make sure that they're like, uh, they come, they, they get swollen. But what I usually do is, this is the, this is the trick uh, that I use. I usually boil my macaroni and cheese for maybe five to seven minutes just on a roaring boil and then I'll just turn them down and let them sit in that boiling hot water while I make my sauce for my macaroni and cheese which is what we are now going to do. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is open one to two cans. For this amount of macaroni and cheese, I'm going to use maybe one and a half to two cans of evaporated milk. I like canned milk because it is, um, it just makes it more, sh the cheese string better and it doesn't clobber together. But um, in order to prevent that from clobbing together and look like curdly or, you know, like too much, you have to go slow with adding in your evaporated milk. So what I have done is just cut with the can opener two holes on each side, one so I can kind of ventilate and be able to pour like a, like a sprout or something into the butter. So I'm gonna pour, I know that I at least wanna start with, that was probably like um, two thirds. Open this cheese up, and I have used a little bit on something else, I don't know, but anyway. This is how I like to cut my cheese up. Just take the, a large knife or whatever, and just cut down this slice. No, that slice is not a good example. Hold on, guys. Okay, we're gonna do about, what? how big is that? Is that a half inch? Mm -hmm. Is that about a half inch or a quarter inch? Maybe that's about a quarter inch slice. And then take it and cut it, and cut that down, and then cut it in half. And it'll just kind of stick to your knife, and then you just take it and put it all off into there. And then make sure that's still on a low heat because see what'll happen because you have milk in there and then the cheese has milk, it's a milk dairy product, it'll begin to scorch, which is not what you want to have happen. Okay, you don't want it to scorch. So we'll go ahead back and then take that, cut it in half and cut it in half one more time. See, it just kind of sticks right to it. But I mean, this is not the way you have to do it. You can just pick it up if you want, okay? Now my noodles are over here, remember, and what these noodles are doing, they're still cooking. See, they're still plumping up. Did you uh, zoom in on that? So they can see, those are very plumped up. You see how large those are? Let me see if you guys can really see them. Yeah, those are large. And so all that cheese just goes down in there instead of using those little baby noodles and you know, all that. That's like Velveeta style. I mean, not Velveeta, but what's that one that the kids like and it's in the box? Kraft. So, Kraft, uh, just the home, you know, the box macaroni and cheese. I don't know. But anyway, this is just an easy macaroni and cheese and it's not a real expensive recipe. At a later time, I can show you a, a really expensive recipe. So this is about how much cheese that you should use. If we were to measure it, then we would say that this is about a cup and a half. 
or a third or either one third of the block of the entire block and the block remember is this big that is a 32 ounce block so just close that back up real good because you don't want your macaroni i mean your cheese strap because it is um now this can kind of cost a little bit more and i haven't found a way around it for my macaroni and cheese but this is more of a simple macaroni and cheese, but you can do a real elegant macaroni and cheese. You can do one with breadcrumbs. Um, you can do one with sour cream in it. Um, there's just a lot of variations of macaroni and cheese that you can use. So we're just gonna let that melt down for a moment. And I'm actually gonna time it. And then when I come back, I'm gonna tell you guys how long it took for it to melt down. Okay guys? So right now I just wanted to show you guys that the water is still in here but what has happened is that the noodles have swelled all the way to the top so the water if I kind of go like that then you can see you know how much water I actually have in there now make sure that you clean out your sink like real good before you pour this water in there because sometimes you know I don't know you just don't want any extra you don't want germs in there and I forgot to say this the amount of water, the amount of water that you want to add into it before you boil your noodles, like to boil your noodles, is that you want to put like um, at least two inches above your noodles. And then you know that you have enough water so that your noodles will absorb it. So let's go back to the noodles. And then we're going to pour it slowly into our colander. Some heat coming at y'all. And then we're gonna keep that cold water running on there because they're continuing to cook. That's why I only bring them to a boil and then just let them, then just turn them right off so that they're just, you know, cooked the right way. They're not all busted up and falling apart and stuff. Um, or soggy, soggy macaroni and cheese is the worst. So then you just fill your pot up with some more cold, cold water, as cold as you can get it. Because these noodles are still cooking, as you can see the steam coming off. Now, we're going to go back over here to our cheese that is cooking a little bit higher than what I would like. I don't know. I turned my head. You can't even turn your head barely on your cheese. But anyway, the only kind of cheese that I have in there I took this off the stove so you guys just can really get a good look. It's just my Velveeta still. And I'm just letting that cook nice and good in my non-stick. That's just so important. Cause you, it is easy, very easy to um, scorch your cheese. It's you turn around for two seconds over, your, your cheese is ruined. Well, anyway, you don't want to ruin your cheese. But anyway, this is how you want your cheese to look. I'm going to show you guys. That right there, see where it's kind of like you can see the lumps of Velveeta. And else are, what's this called? Nice and cheesy. But it, yeah, Velveeta is cool. But anyway, it should have a couple little lumps in there. Now at this point, I know that I need some more milk, so I'm gonna add the rest of the can of milk in there for you all. And then I'm gonna add about a third of the other can because I can clearly see that that won't be enough for those noodles, not in my opinion. Not to just make sure that they are just that cheesy. So then this is right. We're just gonna bring that to where it's just heated up at an even temperature. Now, bear with me as I bring out a dish that I'll be placing this in, okay? Okay, so now at this point, our macaroni and cheese, we have ran it under some cold, ice cold water for several minutes. And we're gonna just take it and make sure you do this step to get all water. Cause I want you to be able to see if I kind of hold that up, how there's water dripping. Do you see that? You see that, guys? There's. 
All right, yeah, go upstairs for a minute. Okay, I'll be right there. Yeah, but so anyway, see, I said there's so much going on at this house, so you guys. But anyway, give it a shake a few times just to where you see that water still sprinkling out because you don't want no wet, juicy from water macaroni and cheese either. Juicy, soggy macaroni and cheese that you don't want to eat. So anyway, now I'm going to take my colander and I'm going to pour about half of this into this old-fashioned pot this is old school y'all i'm gonna show y'all this pot because i know that your mother has one and it's so cool look at this one i still got one this one is about 50 years old and it belongs to my mom she is 84 years old and still here but anyway you pour about half of it into there something smells like it's cooking fast honey hold on okay then after that your macaroni and cheese has begun to get more smooth looking and then you got these little just a few little cheese chunks okay but you want those that's like deliberate. You don't want to melt it all the way to a sauce. I mean, but you can though, because sometimes I do. So I just be lying. I just be changing it up every time. So maybe I make it another time a different way. And y'all see. But anyway, you take this. A lot of people would add some eggs on at a certain point. They would take and whisk some eggs and then put it in here or pour it on the noodles and stuff. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not a lot of people. I'm just me. And I'm just trying to make this real simple. You know what I mean? So you guys just can get the hang of some good, delicious macaroni and cheese that your family will beg you for and you won't want to cook. Okay, so anyway, we pour about half of the mixture in there, making sure the little cheesies go in there too. And then just kind of wipe off the side of your dish. Hold on, y'all. Just Okay, look at that. Show them that, how that's looking. And you don't want that fresh cheese smell going on, so you just make sure to wipe off the side of your dish so that it's not running everywhere. And what you do is just put that back on the burner, y'all. And you don't want to stir it. You just want to make sure that your cheese is like one and they're pretty good. Now at this point, I see that I need a little bit more milk. So I'm going to take this can of milk, I'm going to add it into this one, and it's hot as fish grease out here in Colorado. So anyway, that's going to take to the temperature real quick, but while we're waiting on that, so we got it on a medium heat, but I am standing so close to it. So while we're waiting on that, and what you can even do if you would like, is add a little, just a dot it. Just because you want to see it be liquidy. See, if I push it to the side and I'm going to hold that back. Okay, can you see that's liquidy down on there? Because I'm baking it. And that's going to get absorbed into these noodles and make for some fine macaroni and cheese. Mm, mm, mm. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so then the next step is I'm gonna do something pretty unusual here. I'm just gonna bust out like this. I'm gonna hold it, hold it, and then I'm just gonna tear it open. Odd, right? This is Mexican cheese, but it makes your macaroni and cheese just have a different kind of good taste. Okay, so we're gonna add some of that in there. The reason why we didn't add it in the sauce or anything like that is because before it has clabbered on me. I have had that happen. Now, I have seen some other people bake some and it didn't look like there's clabbered up, but I don't know. I just don't want to try that. Now, something that I forgot to do, I'm not even on front, I forgot to add some salt. So, I'm going to add in this top mixture that's going to go all the way down in the bottom of it so it's not going to matter and make a big difference you may not want to add salt because cheese is pretty salty as it is and so anyway i am going to just freelance this and i'm going to add to this about 
maybe a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of accent, which brings out the flavor. I don't like no pepper in mine. I particularly don't like any onion powder or anything. The only thing I like is to taste cheese. I don't wanna taste other flavors like onions and, and garlic and bell peppers, no. That's not what I like, not in this version. But we'll do another version where we wanna taste that. So anyway, we got that in there. So we're gonna hurry back over here because we don't want no burned up squirts cheese and give that a stir. And when you're stirring this cheese at all times, never scrape the bottom, never. No matter what it feels like, no matter how great your stick proof pan is, don't ever scrape the bottom. That's just what I'm saying, okay? I just recommend, don't do it. And so anyway, then I'm gonna grab the next half of my macaroni and cheese and I'm gonna put it in there. Oops, 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 oops. Lost a couple. But anyway, I'm gonna place those in there. And I'm just gonna make sure that they're all straightened out. Boom, 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 boom. See, now it's sticking together. And we wanna have a whole bunch of them like facing upward so that they catch all that cheese going in it. So then we just take this little, see this is pretty juicy, but this is how we want it, right? Cause we gotta imagine this is gonna bake in the oven and it will absorb into those noodles. And so we want it liquidy, but never watery. So that's why you have to bake it. You just have to follow the directions when you make macaroni and cheese. I don't care whose recipe it is. Never, never like miss a beat when it comes to it. Except for the, um, except for the sea, like the salt, like you can miss that step. Um, you can use less cheese. You can use a little bit of non fat or non whatever kind of butter that you're using, but I don't like to do that. So this pot, look at that. This is the best pot that you can probably get out there right now. This is the copper shelf pot and still has a little bit of cheese on there. So that meant that if I was to peel that off, it'd probably be brown and maybe possibly taste scorched. So I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna get rid of that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add a couple more layers of cheese to make it, excuse me guys. Yeah, we did. I just had to rinse my hand. And we're gonna add some more cheese. But this time, we're going to do some different cheese. We're going to use some mild. The reason why I like um, mild, oh, that's sharp. Oh, no, here's the mild. I'm forgetting where I'm at. Okay, okay so we're going to use some mild cheese. And it doesn't have to be Kraft. This one just probably was on sale. That's why I got it. But I don't know. Anyway. We're going to use, that first go around we used, we did use at least a cup of Mexican cheese. Now we're gonna use some finely shredded, make sure it's finely shredded, mild cheese. The reason why it needs to be finely shredded is because it makes it stringier. The reason why it, be, it needs to be mild is because mild is way stringier than just regular shredded, extra sharp, you know, or shredded or sharp cheddar. So anyway, this is still cheddar, but it's mild. And so we're gonna go on ahead and put that on there. And that's kind of heavily. We put about, oh, three-fourths of a cup of that. And then we're finally gonna go in with our sharp cheddar because that has the most flavor. The sharp has the most flavor. So on that sharp, see this is a lot of cheese. This is gonna be really cheesy and real good. Watch, guys. Okay. So that was, oh, that was about three-fourths cup of sharp. So I hope you guys can remember that because I can't, I change my recipe every single time. So, you know, but if for some reason it'd be coming out tasting the same, you know, I don't know. So this is an important ingredient to have in your cupboard. It really doesn't have a flavor. They say that, that some people say it does to them, but it doesn't to me. So I add as much as I feel like adding at this point I'm going to add about two, two teaspoons of paprika 
you need to have paprika. When you fry your chicken, you need to put some on there. When you put, cook your macaroni and cheese, you need to put some on there. Just whatever you do, have some paprika. I don't know, it's just a good seasoning to have. And to me, it's a must have. I love that, I love bouillon, and I love accent, and of course, salt and pepper, okay? I think you can get away and, and just do it up. So I'm gonna give this a light little shake like this because I'm making sure the top goes to the bottom. And then it's kind of, I don't want mine perfectly flat or I will smash it like that, but I don't know, it's, just watch. So we're gonna pause this, we're gonna put it in the oven at about, oh, 400 degrees. Let it bake for about 20 minutes, that's all. And it's gonna be done, so I'll see you in a minute. And guys, our macaroni and cheese in our mom's casserole dish, 50 year old casserole dish. Look at the flowers on that. Remember this casserole dish? I know y'all got one because they be having this picture on Facebook. Do you have one or whatever? But anyway, watch as we just string it up. See, we're gonna just spoon it on two. See, look at that cheese just sliding off. Look at that. Do you see the stringiness? Oh my God, people. This is what I call life. Oh my Nelly. And that is macaroni and cheese. Done.